We've got a number of things we're going to be talking about today. I guess what we want to head it off with is the memory clip of the week. Um, and that is? It's number 3429. It's about a group of activists in Mauritania who were arrested for burning a book that was uh, legitimizing slavery. They've had that problem there. It's a Muslim country on the western coast of Africa, bordering Mali on its eastern coast. And uh, they were arrested for burning those books. Wow. Okay. Um, so, as usual, those memory clips are, are great for our members to kind of uh, get in on. And this clip is what? About a minute? Two minutes? It's about two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, great. All right. So, you wanted to get into, you know, there's been a lot going on with Iran uh, for the past couple of weeks now. Um, really escalating a lot of media attention over there. Uh, what's going on with this Supreme Leader? Well, according to the Tehran Times in English, uh, about a week ago, the Supreme Leader made a statement that Iran is at the center of an anti-hegemonistic movement. And that concept goes back to the Iranian constitution, but it explains a lot. Uh, they see themselves as the leaders of all the oppressed nations of the world, that um, the, the world is divided into uh, tyrants and oppressed nations, and that the, uh, the, uh, the Arab Spring, he, he, ref he made reference to, took its inspiration from the Islamic Revolution of 1979, and that Iran is leading this anti-hegemonistic movement against the oppressors. It goes back to their constitution, uh, which uh, calls for the uh, downfall of uh, all foreign governments by the end of the century, which hadn't happened. It says that Iran rejects all forms of domination and oppression and supports the struggle of oppressed uh, nations against the tyrants, and that the uh, part of the uh, role, uh, responsibility of the army and its revolutionary guard is to spread uh, the revolution at home and abroad. So they actually view themselves as a world power just on the other side of the scale. So uh, when we think of ourselves as a world power we have to understand that they view themselves as well as a world power just uh, representing uh, all those nations that they consider we are oppressing. Let's let's move on to uh, uh, three uh, valuable ports, reports that you are bringing yes. to the the attention of our listening audience. All right, um, why don't you why don't you start off by listing yeah. the reports? Yes, yes, it's the three three very important ports reports you can get online. One is put out by the uh, Manetta Transportation Institute, and it's titled "An Analysis of 15 Terrorist Plots Against Public Surface Transportation." And it analyzes 15 foil plots, so it doesn't include uh, London and Madrid. And it's a, quite a good analysis. Uh, who was behind it? How were they foiled? Um, the Heritage Foundation came out with a report entitled 50 Terror Plots Foiled Since 9-11. And again, it analyzes those 50 plots. And uh, imagine if uh, uh, some percentage of those plots were were successful, but 50 foiled plots since 9-11, the Heritage Foundation, and The Economist had a very, very good article on Al-Qaeda, uh, dated April uh, 21st, 2012, entitled, Al-Qaeda is down, but far from out. And it's a very good analysis on the relationship between Al-Qaeda Central and the other Al-Qaeda organizations that, uh, to some degree, whatever degree, uh, associated with Al Qaeda, uh, Al Qaeda in the Arab uh, Peninsula, Al Qaeda in the Maghreb or North Africa, Al Shabaab in Somalia has just uh, uh, created a, a relationship with Al Qaeda. And even though uh, Al Qaeda Central has taken serious hits and is uh, in no way capable of doing what it uh, was able to do 10 years ago, the Al Qaeda affiliates are, uh, are uh, growing or appears to be growing. In strength. So that is a very uh, good article to read, and the other two reports I recommend.